let's look at a DX RTU. So that would be a direct expansion. So that means there's no chilled water loop. It's just directly the uh, refrigerant to the air handling side uh, and rooftop unit. So this is something that's sitting up on the roof. Um, and this might be sort of a perfect thing for say multiple tenants. Let's try setting this up here. So I'm gonna do two of them. We're a little out of scale here. Gonna separate these spaces into two tenant spaces. And what we're saying here is that this thing up here is a package unit. It's a DX RTU, um, and it comes, you literally buy it off the shelf. They would adjust it, um, customize it just a little bit to fit to your exact needs, but essentially you're just buying it off the shelf. And then they just like drop it in with a crane, uh, and it sits up on the roof, and inside there it's got a little refrigerant loop in it, so it's got its own little chiller system going on there, and it has the ability to have air sort of being blown through it uh, so that uh, that uh, can create a uh, sort of cooling tower effect in this small space. Sometimes with these uh, DXRT units you actually do have a separate cooling tower, but sometimes it's literally built right into the same box, so it all comes all in one uh, element. I've got my fan and I've got the ability to have air blowing down into the space. And then that's going to blow around each of those spaces. Now, these might be uh, separate. If this was one tenant on two floors, it might be one unit. Uh, if it was two uh, different tenants, it might have two different uh, supply trunks going down, so it, you weren't working off of the same one. Or it might just, even if it was two tenants, you might just treat it as one sort of general space. Uh, but any number of different ways of doing these layouts. Uh, the biggest issue here is that I've got a great big chunk of space taken up by these vertical shafts uh, because I have to get all of the air from that uh, air handling unit up on the roof down into whatever floor I'm going to. So this is two floors, so that means I'd have two full, you know, two tenant spaces worth of air going down through that floor. So this element on the second floor there's going to be a big chunk of space missing from that, which I can't rent or I can't uh, use. I can't move it around. I can't uh, alter it in any because it's got to go straight on through. Uh, and then I would have a return system that presumably would go kind of near it, but it would reach you know, to other locations so you didn't get that short circuiting. And then the air would find its way to the return system and then get back, brought back up uh, to this rooftop unit, get reconditioned and then get uh, blown out. Uh, so you have everything happening all right there, including that, uh, that little coil that's going uh, right there, straight from the refrigerant and the, that return air is just being blown right across. Uh, we also have a handy, we're right there outside, so we can get some fresh air. Uh, we can just mix it right in, same that we would have done otherwise, but instead of having a duct bring it in from somewhere, we can just grab it right there from the outside because we're already up on the roof on the outside. Uh, so we could have uh, two of these, we could have 10 of them, we could have 100 of them, uh, depending on how big the building was, how many tenants you had, whether you wanted to have each uh, space done separately. Uh, this is a sort of a perfect thing for like a, uh, strip mall or uh, maybe I've got a more like a somewhere closer towards a big box uh, and I could instead of having one central system I might just put say five six different rooftop units on and just spread them out the, uh, through the space and I just blow in air and pull air back from sort of near that area and it's very you know I, I only need a little bit of duct work in order to deal with these great big buildings, I'm mostly just kind of blowing that air in from the roof area and letting it kind of settle down into the space. So in the right situation, this can be very cost effective. The, uh, the advantages to this would be uh, really that it's like straight off the shelf, 
whatever my situation is, I can just put one of these things in there. We have to get the ductwork down through the space, but once we do that, I don't, I don't have any of these other sort of complicated maintenance issues. Like if this thing is, uh, something's wrong, we're probably throwing it away and buying a new one, right? They're uh, relatively easy to get. The biggest issue from that standpoint is I probably have to put a crane out in order to get one of these things up on the roof. Uh, but you know, they're still they're sort of simple, small. Uh, they don't have a huge profile, so I don't see them from very far typically. Um, so very advantageous in the right situation. But also compare this to that chiller in the basement. That chiller in the basement's there for 40, 50 years, and it's going to be there easily uh, in this sort of nice coddled space of the basement, easily protected. Uh, easy to maintain. This thing's sitting up on the roof and it's getting all of the uh, UV rays, all the sleet and snow and the wind and the rain and all that stuff is pounding away on this thing. You'd be lucky to get uh, 12, 15 years out of one of these things and often they may only last maybe five to eight years, something along those lines in, in really rough situations. Uh, so, you know, while they're advantageous in a lot of uh, situations, you know, if you're if you're somebody who's going to hold on to this thing for a longer period, that's just not very great. That's just not a it's not a great system. Uh, doesn't really make uh, efficiency sense uh, to have something that you're going to have to replace every 12 years uh, if you're going to be holding on to this building for 50 years. But your uh, tenant space, you uh, you've got a lot of retail tenants. There's a lot of high turnover, so people come in, maybe they try a thing for two, three, five years, it either works or it doesn't. Uh, if it works, maybe they're moving on to a better retail space, and so you have a new tenant coming in. Like that kind of space, really quick turnovers, totally makes sense because, you know, worst case scenario is put a whole new system in uh, to fit the new tenant. Uh, so you're not always trying to ex to live with the existing setup uh, in terms of how these things might sort of logically go together. So uh, DX rooftop units, really common in the sort of faster paced, higher turnover. Uh, it wouldn't really make sense if you were trying to get a rooftop unit going down, say, five floors or eight floors or something like that. And that would just be too much air trying to get through all of those different floors. It would take up too much space uh, on those upper floors. Uh, it probably doesn't make sense in somebody who's going to hold the building for a long time and really wants to get a lot of efficiency out of it. Um, but for those faster turnover, those sort of lighter touch, uh, things that, that uh, may or may not last any length of time, uh, this is sort of a perfect choice. It's that uh, uh, lower cost, uh, lower infrastructure, um, everything's a little bit more off the shelf, uh, so pretty simple and straightforward. And again, this is another one of those DX systems. There's no chilled water loop in this one, so it's just three of the four loops.